Today could mark quite a big deal in terms of crypto, and all of this is going to be leaning in on China. We'll break it all down for you guys today. You don't want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is iTrust Capital. Looking at a long-term way to hold your crypto, or maybe you're just going to get started in crypto and you want to do it in an IRA. Well, you can do a crypto IRA with iTrust Capital. It's easy to set up your crypto IRA. You can either start with a brand new one, or you can actually bring a, an existing IRA into iTrust Capital directly. All you have to do is just click their website, itrustcapital.com. You will get a $100 funding reward if you decide to set it all up. So check it out. Use our link down below. It does help the channel. I want to get into a couple of topics today and, and some of the things that are happening just in general. We have the CPI data coming out tomorrow. Remember that the SUI event is happening next week. The Avalanche event is happening next, next week. You have the permissionless event going on right now. Also, you've got the De John Deaton debate and, of course, the Robin Hood event also happening in Miami. So there is a lot of things happening in crypto in general here in the U.S., but guess what? China is on the verge of doing something I think that could shift the tides of where crypto begins to go. I want to go over to a couple of uh, topics here just to kind of frame it because remember the global impact of the economy, especially around some of the G7, I think is still led by the Federal Reserve. And of course, part of that is going to be the rate cutting scenario for the Federal Reserve. So the Fed minutes are going to be coming in here shortly. Uh, and of course, we're going to get, I think, a, a coordinated effort into both November and December in terms of rate cuts, most likely at 25 basis points, both for November and December. That potentially could get us at a full basis one point uh, rate cut in this year. So uh, th all of that, of course, could be very positive for risk assets and of course, the, the markets in general. And just don't forget, the jobs uh, data has been continuing to climb. We had a big over jobs report that just came in, overforming jobs report. However, I do think there will be a downward uh, correction on that. They've been doing downward corrections for quite some time. I still think some of that is very political, but that's for another video. I wanna go over to a couple of things happening right now. This was the jobs data that I was referencing. Uh, September jobs report showed the economy created 785,000 new jobs. So if this is the case, if we are seeing a little bit of lightening the load on the economy, Prior to the election, along with everything else that we have going, this could be the scenario that is brewing for the perfect storm as we start to see China stepping into the game. China, the Shanghai Composite, of course, fall, uh, fell about 6%. This, of course, as the stimulus space uh, rally comes to an end, this is one of the things that they're concerned with. And the, the issue is, is the stimulus that has come into the market, we saw that big boom last week on the Chinese stock market, and a lot of activity, but I want to go a little bit further. I want to play a clip for you. This will explain it a little bit better. Take a look. You know, we talked yesterday about how everyone expected the National Development and Reform Commission to announce a massive stimulus package, even though it's not their mandate. And there was big disappointment in the, in the market that this commission that doesn't announce stimulus hadn't announced stimulus. Well, the finance ministry now has an, a briefing on Saturday, and they are the group that is responsible for stimulus. So maybe we might get something there. I think that mm. overall, the more bullish backdrop for China and Hong Kong absolutely remains compared to where we were a month ago. Bulls are, have the stronger hands. People who have heard the message from the Chinese government that they're going to fix this, they will fix this, they have many tools to fix this, they are the ones who are in the stronger hands in the driving seat here. All right, so that, what that means quickly is if China does recoup their stimulus idea and how they're going to roll this out, the Ministry of Finance is going to hold the presser on Saturday. This is October 12th, so this is this weekend, and they're going to be talking about a lot of new policies. So consumption rather than investment, they're also looking at forward guidance on the fiscal deficit up to a 4% GDP. They're looking at longer economic management, dividing, uh, fighting inflation. They also want to go into the debt burden that they're dealing with. So there's a lot of positive things that could be lining up for China. And not only that, it's very possible we could see an unbanning of Bitcoin by end of year. That I think would be the, maybe the holy grail in terms of crypto in general, when you look at the Chinese impact on crypto in general. I want to go to a couple more clips. This is Tom Lee talking about the framework of what this might mean, not only to the U.S. economy, but the global economy. Take a look. Tom, let me start with you. It was in April on this program that you said you thought the S&P 500 could close at 5,700, maybe even higher. Well, looky here. Look where it is today. So the maybe higher part is still a part of your formula? 
Uh, yes. Not only is has the economy survived extremely high interest rates, but the Fed is beginning to cut rates. And a, an economy that has sort of been languishing um, has been China. And now we have some stimulus and what looks like some bazooka policies that is supporting that region. And we have a lot of cash on the sidelines. So I think that this is a formula for stocks to do pretty well the next three to 12 months. And, and that's why we you know, you know, we think yeah. that you, you, we would be well beyond 5,700 before year end. All right, you're looking at the S&P 500 right here on my chart. It shows the all-time high at 5,781 as we're filming this right now. And what Lee is talking about is the amount of capital that, that we've talked about many times here on the show, and that is this wall of liquidity that potentially could be coming once that the timing is right. Key things have to happen politically here in the U.S., China, of course, has to stabilize. That looks like it might be underway. And of course, you've got to see some economic easing here in the United States. The only thing that could really throw a wrench into this is going to be continued global conflict that might still be a problem, even though it is a problem currently. But I think these are the factors that Lee is getting to, and I do agree with him. 2025 might be the stimulus for both markets, both risk and also uh, what we'll see in the traditional uh, finance market as, as well. Bitcoin, of course, Looking at capital reallocation, a couple of points from this analyst right here I thought were interesting on October 8th. This was QCP Capital predicted a new capital reallocation to crypto markets in a bulletin to their Telegram uh, channel subscribers. This, of course, being a Chin, uh, Chinese base. So this could be a big deal because if you're looking at a large amount of a population that has been very active in crypto, got clamped down when Bitcoin mining was removed in 2021, which I still think was the thing that thwarted that bull run, and of course, re-entering that with a stimulus package, China could be setting things up pretty interestingly here going forward. I want to run over to this clip real quick because this is the stimulus expectation. Take a look. Are you still expecting more fiscal measures to come through then in the next few weeks or months? The, the base case is still to follow through, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would look very bad if, if there was no follow through. Uh, so everything is like, you know, the expectation has been built in. And if there's no follow through, it's not just affecting global investors. I think the, 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 the key here is that the domestic investors are also in, in the market right now, right? People are opening an account and they yeah. do not deliver. The credibility issue might be back uh, again, right? Because we have many false dawns. Can the government afford another one, right? And still not delivering, I think there is a lot of frustration if right. that happens again yet. Yeah. All right, so some key things he said there. One is the government can't afford another one another downturn in the Chinese economy. I'm wondering though, I mean, you could, you could go, you know, devil's advocate here and look at, is China setting something up or is this truly them trying to get their economy into the world stage again as one of the leading uh, GDP leaders uh, when it comes to just the stimulus of not only the uh, growth in China, but also the investment appetite. So I don't know, this is going to be very interesting to, to watch very closely because I think the factor that plays into this with China could lead us into a very, very active bull market for 2025. Look at that. Speaking of that, look at the chart right here, S&P 500 versus Bitcoin. This is U.S. elections back in 2012. There's the 2016. You can kind of see right there, U.S. elections spike, U.S. elections spike. And then there's the 2020 elections spike into the next year. Then we had, of course, the all-time high. And here we are right now. This could look very similar to that little zoom in right there to what's happening right there. If you can kind of see it right there on that side. So could we be in for uh, unbelievable market correction going into maybe the biz biggest bull market ever? This is what we're watching very closely. Banner says, yeah, maybe so. China is expected to lift the ban on Bitcoin by the end of year. And if that does happen, it is going to be unleashed. The Kraken will definitely uh, be flowing out there at the next level. Don't forget, AVAX getting ready to uh, have their event. But this was kind of interesting because there's some things happening with uh, MeWe. And this is something we've talked about in terms, remember, these are our um, decentralized social media platforms. And this was kind of interesting because this has got uh, Ava Labs. That's John Wu right there, president of Ava Labs. And guess who he's there with? This is the chairman and CEO of MeWe. Remember MeWe tied into Polkadot. 
what's going on here? I don't know what is brewing here, but is there something happening in Asia around social media that could be lining up into blockchain? If we get a decentralized blockchain social media platform that could go viral, you could see something that uh, could be very similar to what we've seen in terms of growth, uh, similar to TikTok. So be on the lookout for this right now. Uh, speaking of that, if you look at the virality of this, right here is the uh, Off the Grid game, which of course is on Avalanche. Just flipped the meme token, Mudang. Everybody remembers the little uh, hippo, right? Well, that just now got flipped by, uh, of course, what's happening with Off the Grid. We did a full video on that yesterday. Go back and check it out if you've never heard of Off the Grid. Don't understand the connection into uh, what Avalanche is doing in the gaming ecosystem. You need to get caught up on all of that. And of course, if you're not uh, plugged into the Diamond Circle, make sure and do that as well. It's one of the greatest places to get additional content. And by the way, if we don't, hopefully we're going to be live here because we're in Florida. Uh, as Hurricane Milton is heading into Tampa, you can kind of see just the active screen right there on uh, Tampa. We're over in the Miami area, so hopefully we'll be uh, spared a little bit. But there are tornadoes already touching down and high winds, so we're actually our studio is going to be shutting down a little bit here. But we may be back tomorrow, definitely on Friday. We'll keep a close eye on all of this. Be on the lookout uh, on my Twitter and also on PBTV uh, over on Twitter as well. We'll try to keep caught up there. And uh, as I said, follow me out there on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.